if the government ran the post office as well as they run their pedophile rings, maybe I'd let them have a crack at mail-in ballots. False news has become all too common on social media. In the woods, talking politics with Dave. So I wanted to get something right into it. I uh, <clears throat> I had some other points lined up, but uh, it was breaking news. I haven't been by my phone much today, considering I'm uh, trying to enjoy my family camping trip, but made some time to record the podcast this week. And uh, I reported up, but in Georgia, apparently there was a clash of protest. It was um, pro-Confederate people, excuse me, the 3% militia members versus Black Lives Matter protest. And it erupted in chaos at the Stone Mountain Memorial, which is basically, from my understanding, it's a pretty big focal point when it comes to Confederacy and the, uh, the whole Southern pride thing. And I just wanted to cut it open with that, uh, it really seems that we are having a hard time as people, whether it be politics or any kind of life, to just sit down and try to have reasonable discussions. You know, like maybe holding a 2,000 person rally right now is not the best thing to do. I think, like, between the epidemic, the economy, the election, everything in this um, upside down kind of fashion, maybe the best thing that we can do is just try to relax. And I'm all for people organizing and everything. And it seems there's a lot of organization. And uh, obviously, I feel like with the rise of the Black Lives Matter and the riots and protests, it has also spurred the other side. For every, for every cause, there's an effect, you know, for every... Uh, I don't know the scientist term, but there's an equal reaction to every action. And that's what we're seeing. And now it just seems like, you know, we're all, at least in this rally, you know, this is going to be so magnified. This is going to be spun so politically. Um, I think this is, I don't want to say it's a, a microchasm of our country right now, but it, it, it does kind of seem that that's really the thing. At least that down in the South in Georgia, this has boiled over into something that's turning violent, more so than the riots and the looting. It's, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say that we can sit down and talk to each other because it doesn't seem like that's really happening a lot. Does it feel like um, when it comes to election, this is going to be like the most divided election we've had? Absolutely. I mean, at without least, a question. At least in our lifetime. Without a question, it might be, you know, in the, the whole country, like almost not the history of the country, obviously, because we had a civil war. We had a, we had a like, literal civil war. But I mean, this is probably the closest thing to you can get to a political civil war without having an actual bloodshed and violence. But there again, there's been violence. It just hasn't been this massive, um, like, conglomerate of it. But I just... I mean, a few years ago, there was the whole white supremacist rally that the guy drove over people at the one rally. Was that the, you know? was that the, in Charlotte? Charleston. Was that, yeah, Charleston. Charleston. Was that the Charleston, both sides Charleston. comment that got everyone fired up? 
Yeah, Donald I don't Trump. honestly I don't really remember too much. Like Donald Trump's came out and he said, Yeah, there there was good people on both sides. Yeah. You know, there's people doing the right thing and all that stuff. That was and, that uh, was er- that was fairly early in his presidency, if I remember correctly. That got people really, yeah, really fired up. He didn't have the best rollout with that. I think like uh it's dumb, but maybe you should prefix everything with like I don't I condone violence and racism, but you know yeah, like he, he kinda had to come out after the mouth. fact and say it. Yeah, and then it I just mean, he makes said it, it but like he had to say it after. Stuff. Stuff. Yeah, it wasn't a good look. Yeah, and I just feel like obviously all this stuff has intensified, you know. But the three percenters that originally set up this um, this rally in Georgia, it said there was going to be two thousand people there. I mean, dude, that's a. I mean, that's not a standing army, but that's like a battalion. <laughs> you know, like yeah. it's a lot of people. To be standing sure. around getting hyped up about the same thing. And then you have counter protesters, whatever one would be a counter protest. I assume Black Lives Matter was a counter protest. Once again, this just kind of came in on my news feed, and I just wanted to really touch base on that. That it seems like we're at each other's necks politically and in society. Yeah. You know, the, ma- the mask thing has been a huge controversy. You know, it just seems like we are just getting it's getting harder and harder to talk to. Each other. And you can say it's Trump's fault. You can say it's politicians' fault. But I blame the media. I I one hundred percent blame all of this on all of the media because they double dip, they cherry pick, and they don't play devil's advocate. They don't look at things objectively. They report opinions that are backed up by facts. They don't report facts and then give their opinion. And it's become yeah. detrimental and dangerous, poisonous republic. Yeah, and that's a that's a big reason for uh, the very specific intro we have to our videos. I think media is they're almost more dangerous at this point than the federal government itself when it comes to the terms of liberty. Yeah, and I don't know what started it. I don't know if it was under the Reagan administration. I've heard, but. When they, uh, when they were able to basically report anything and not have any kind of lawsuits or legal repercussions for printing lies or slander or blackmail or, you know, journalism isn't about reporting the truth. If it bleeds, it leads. You got to be first, you know, and it just seems like the powder keg has just gotten bigger and bigger. And as that's grown, the wick has gotten shorter. And here we got, here we are. We got, we got a couple thousand people fighting each other. I don't know how bad, once again. This just came across my feet. I don't know everything going on. I don't know how bad it was. If anybody was injured, I hope everybody was safe. And you know, but this is not going to look good. You no. know, uh, the three percenters is a militia group. You know, and they always talk about when tyranny becomes duty, rebellion. Uh, when tyranny becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. And their whole thing is ground a lot in the Second Amendment and stuff. So it's it's just painting all, not just their movement, but BLM. It's painting all of this just with a very broad brush of not good things yeah yeah now that that just that just happened because i haven't seen anything about that yet i lit- literally before i took the walk up the hill here to sit under this beautiful oak tree that my dad told me about you see look at that ancient beast um yeah before i came up here it was up and i just kind of breezed over the article by the daily mail very briefly um but I guess I just wanted to set the tone with that, that, you know, I think that's a, a thing that we're trying to do here at December 17th, 73, is we're trying to have, um, obviously you and I, we um, can agree on a lot of things. We kind of disagree on some other things, but at the Base Roots Movement, we're really just trying to like bring a little bit of normalcy and kind of report the news as it's given, you mm-hmm. know, not necessarily as it was said. Yeah. You know, because there's so much opinion, you know, and obviously the average person doesn't have enough time to sift through it or have the willpower, you know, or the, um, the, like basically the inspiration to get through all this crap and try to see through the murkiness of it. It's, it's very, it's detrimental to this entire country. Yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't mean we don't have opinions about things that happen, but, um, sometimes it's. You know, we can have our opinions about it, but we can also report uh, exactly what happens when it happens. Yeah, but um, a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff going on in the news today. During our last episode, we correctly predicted the VP pick. 
Um, Mala Harris. Yeah. I don't think it's, I mean, I don't think it was a super weird or bold prediction by any means. I mean, I think a lot of people saw the wording on the wall, but um, it's now an official, official VP pick. What do you, uh, what do you think of, of the Kamala Harris pick? Well, just like you said, it was kind of predicted. I mean, she was really kind of the only real candidate out of uh, the list that he had that had any real name recognition. And I also know that Biden was sent a letter by many predominantly uh, predominant black voices such as Charlotte and the God. Uh, I think Diddy was in on it. But they urged him that you need to elect a person of color. You know, once again, that politics plays very heavily into that de- decision, it seems. Not saying that she's not capable or that, you know, she's, you know, she's not, <laughs> she's not terrible, you know, by any stretch of the imagination as being um, a prosecutor and stuff. But she obviously... She was in government for a purpose, you know, like she did her thing, whether we can agree on it or not. But, uh, yeah, it was, you know, like you said, it was a writing on the wall and mm-hmm. many, many predicted that she sure. would be the pick. So it wasn't out of the, it wasn't like we were swinging at a ball and got lucky. I mean, it right. was the path of least resistance. It was the most likely and, um, it doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, once again, Joe Biden and his, uh, non- cognitive decline i think um i think played in a factor as well you know a lot of people are speculating at least it's you could call it a conspiracy at this point that joe's basically just going to give the reins to her kind of you know just kind of let her take a little bit but more she can't uh, unless she's going to be controlling it from behind the scenes but she cannot be president if anything were to happen to biden because i don't think either of her parents were american naturalized citizens my father was talking to me about that that she he said that he read a, a constitutional lawyer or scholar um this is obviously cherry picked by one person but uh said that her parents weren't here long enough for her to become naturalized in their birth mm-hmm. so obviously there's a little bit of murkiness there i wonder how it will all play out um i don't think anything's going to come of it because it will just be you know you're racist you hate women you're bigot you know it's just going to be, and we're already seeing that. Trump called her nasty, mm-hmm. and they already started with the, the, the typical things. You hate women, you hate black, people of color, and um, I don't know. I'm hoping to, I mean, it, it might take a little longer, but I'm really hoping for a day that we um, really stop hiring people or addressing people or um, electing people just based on their skin tone or thinking that because of an out factor such as your skin tone or your eye color or whatever, your height, whatever it is, your sex, whatever it is, I hope that we can kind of move beyond this. Yeah, I mean, at what point do we move beyond it? Because it was a, it was quite a long time ago that MLK was talking about being judged on the content of your character, not the color of your skin, and here we are. Uh, he, I'm not saying he only chose her because she was a uh, black female, but... Um, he um, set <laughs> set the guidelines, not me. He's the one who said he wanted a, a person of color, and he he wanted to have an established uh, female candidate. So he he boxed himself in, and I'm not saying again that doesn't mean she's not qualified or anything, but uh, it, it's hard to argue the fact that a big part of it was the fact she's a person of color and she's a woman. Yeah, yeah, it's um. Speaking of a woman, uh, I saw an article that talked about how Hillary would be thrilled to be part of the Biden administration. So it just seems like he might be just lining. Um, yes. There wasn't any traction, you know, like there wasn't any, um, you know, there was nothing, obviously nothing set in stone. Guys, not even in yet. But uh, it, I thought it was kind of funny. I think we just linked them together quick that uh, who knows? He might just line his whole cabinet, judges, uh, Supreme Court, anything that he gets to pick might just be lined based on these um external factors not these sure not somebody's uh worth as far as what they can do or what they stand for or their ideology or success rates or it, it seems like as the world has gotten more complex our ability to look at things complex has gone the other way we've got we've become simple in a complex world mm-hmm. uh, i got uh, a couple things on the covid front that i saw this week um, some some new COVID news. Yeah, 
like we haven't had enough. I just kind of want to gloss <laughs> over quick to get it out there. But numbers are rising in Europe, uh, specifically Germany. I don't have the actual statistics, but they are. Um, they're questioning if like the second wave's coming. Um, something else I saw about COVID was two people in China tested positive for COVID after they already recovered for a few months. Mm-hmm. So it just proves like we've uh, most people and us included have been saying that we just really have no idea what the hell's going on with this thing. And um, anybody that says they do or Fauci or the administration, it's just all it's basically just political banter at this point. Anything to do with COVID, you know. The science isn't sound, and we don't even have scientists that know what the hell's going on, you know? Yeah, I, um, I said I said a long time ago on a video that I want to know what the end game is for COVID. What, what's the end goal of uh, this thing? It was flattened the curve for the longest time. The curve got flattened, and the, it's not going away. It's a virus. It's going to yeah, be and, here. Yeah, you're right. It was flattened the curve, and then it turned into the new normal, re-engineering society. Um, here in New York State, Cuomo said... We can't reopen till we test people. And we test people, literally testing tens of thousands of people every day across the country, monitoring numbers. And it's just like the goalposts keep moving. You know, mm-hmm. well, we can't open phase four until this happens. This happens and it's like, all right, now that we're at phase four, you still have to wear a mask. You have to distance. You have to do this. You can't eat chicken wings. Like it's just these pe- It's it's very obvious these people do not want to give up any kind of power or do or say or anything because they're worrying about their political career, you know? And they also, obviously they're trying to save lives. So I don't want to discredit and make it think it's all malicious, but, uh, with our governor in particular here in New York state, Andrew Cuomo, uh, he is a political tool. And I don't mean that like he is a tool as a person. He's, (laughs) I don't like him. (laughs) So, uh, a couple episodes ago, we did our conspiracy cast video. Of course, uh, here's here's one for you. How likely do you think it is that if Trump loses the election, the miraculous COVID vaccine comes out very soon after, and we're we're going back to the normal? Nothing will be back to normal, even with a vaccine. I don't believe it. I don't believe they're just going to willingly give up power. But as far as conspiracies to make it think like, you know, they're holding off until after the election, I think anything's possible. I don't think, I'm not a biologist, but I don't think a vaccine's going to be ready till next year. I mean, I don't think realistically. I don't think it'll matter. And not that it's not going to have any effect, but we have flu, we've had flu vaccinations forever and still tens of thousands of people die every year from the flu. That's not an end-all, be-all. It's not going to totally knock everything out. Well, neither was testing. Neither was wearing masks. But it just seems like these are the goalposts that are being, you know, the proposition of these goalposts is when we get to this point, we can do this. Like, they're allowing us to get back our liberty. And it's it's not going to happen. Because mm. it's just find another excuse. You know, Kelf has been shut down in phase one. Any, and they have more cases than anybody. Granted, they have a higher population, so it makes sense. But even an area like New York, who has a higher population density, California blew us out of the water. Yeah. You know, and they've been locked down longer. We're here going to bars, going to restaurants. We're all doing the proper, you know, things to mitigate the possibility of spread. But so it's just, you know, it's that's the problem I have with this. They say these things, and then when these things happen, it becomes something else. And then the states that didn't, didn't move their goal post that stayed at phase one they still got screwed so it's like none of us know politicians scientists we need more time and more data and anything else is just a political bargaining chip mm-hmm. yeah and talking about moving goal posts uh when this thing first came out we were talking about how deadly the virus is we were talking about death totals and death counts and then once we found that maybe it wasn't as deadly as we were originally told uh the goalpost moved to cases. Well, look at all these cases that we have. We have so many cases. Nobody's talking about the death rate anymore because it's not what it was told it was going to be. Yeah, they said, I remember very specific, they're like a third of the country will get this disease, no matter what we do. So we shut everything down. We did everything. And it still ran through our system. You know, and something else I've been seeing is people are comparing this to like the uh, Kamala Harris did this actually in her, in her campaign speech. That when uh, Ebola came to America, Obama stopped it. 
Well, Ebola is literally not the same disease. It's not as highly as transferable easily like no. Corona is. It's, Corona's in the air. It's on surfaces. It's, Ebola, you got to have bodily fluid exchange. It's Ebola just, is far more deadly, but it is way harder to transmit. Yeah, we need to stop comparing things like they're apples to apples. I mean, we are talking about different fruits. We're talking about different just everything is different about all even even all the way back to the flu pandemic people reference you know in the 1800s or the spanish flu none of these things are the same and no. you know like you said yourself we have a flu vaccine we still get deaths from it you know i've heard some biologists speculate that this may just morph into like a common flu this may be just the thing we deal with every year it's, you know yeah there's no doubt in my mind that's going to be the case I don't know how it's going to change. And thank God the and, numbers are low. Thank God the death rates are low. Thank God it doesn't affect young people. The younger and healthier you are, the more likely you are to beat this without long-lasting effects. And that's what all of the data suggests. You hear plenty of stories about it, basketball players and other people. And, you know, some people do have effects. But for most part, 99, 99%, you're, you're okay. Yeah. So we talked uh, about I just... We talked about in our first video uh, how, you know, I kind of follow sports a little bit, and it seems frequent that you see some news about an athlete who gets it, and, I mean, a week later, yep, he's good. Well, what? That's it? He's good already? Yeah, yeah. these freak people, these 1% these, of these, the population. Right, and these people are extremely healthy and extremely, you know, they are the peak of human health and, and but... But it's it still, I mean, you can't imagine. I mean, get, pe most people don't beat the flu in a week. I mean, that's that's crazy. It's freakish how fast they're getting through it. Yeah, and I'm sure they're getting, you know, vitamin D drips or they're getting, you know, they're on something. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are all on something. Uh, I just want to touch on one other COVID thing before we um, segue here. Um, I was noticed the media was kind of flipping on the testing numbers. Right before, like like you said, like we have all these cases, we have all these cases, we have all these cases. The death the death rate's low. They don't really report that. They don't throw that number in your face. They just use the number case to keep you maybe scared or maybe just on your toes. But I saw an article that was talking about how uh, the numbers are being underreported, or there's actually less testing going on in some areas, so the number could actually be lower. And uh, once again, this is just all politics. This is textbook politics, and no matter what happens, no matter what anybody does, any administration, governor, it's never going to be good enough. It's just going to be painted as this thing. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I hope everybody gets through this healthy. I can't wait until this is done. Even if we you know, have to face it next year for a whole nother year. Mm -hmm. I, um, I don't know. I mean, my daughter's preschool, uh, I talked to the principal the other day, and I asked her about masks, and they said that uh, they cannot force kids to wear masks. You know, it's just kind of, once again, yeah, I mean, everybody's, everybody's got a different point of view. It, it's, we need more data and more time. Yeah, and I mean, and there's, a, and there's a, in a way, most people can't be forced to wear masks. Cause, I mean, really, if you wanted to put up a big enough stink about it, and I don't do it, but, I mean, how many times have you seen people... Uh, say, well, I got a medical condition, and then they just waltz on in because you can't do anything about it. I mean, I, I wouldn't yeah. do it pers I wouldn't do it personally, but um, come on, you, you don't think that's happening? You're out of your mind. Yeah, just pull the HIPAA card. Be like, sure. I don't even have to tell you, HIPAA. It's a HIPAA yeah. violation. Sorry, medical condition. See you later. Yeah, and they walk right yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, and just uh, one other point about the mask. Uh, Biden came out and said that if he was president, he would want a national mask mandate. So, of course, so he was good. The the party that wants more freedom for millions of other various reasons, my body, my choice, just not when it comes to a virus that, well, that's, yeah, that's all really kill people. Yeah. My body, my choice, only if it affects another body, that's not yours. <laughs> oh, Lordy. I love it, man. I love, <laughs> I love my government. <laughs> Is that in case they're listening? Oh, they're listening. <laughs> uh, I had another point that tied back to uh, the billionaire tax we talked about last week. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a political poll that 76% of voters think the wealthy need to pay more tax. Shocking. All, so the, people who, I'm sure, all the people I'm who sure. aren't wealthy and billionaires. Amazing. All yeah, the people who I'm don't sure pay more, more tax. <laughs> 
I'm sure if you were to pull everybody and ask if they think they get more money, it would be a hundred and ten percent of voters. You know, I would love let's, to know let's the pull same those size people in it. of these. I want to pull the same group and ask them if they should pay more tax. How many? How many say yes? Yeah, here in New York, it ain't seventy six percent. The one percent or one percent of the population in New York State pays fifty percent of the state taxes. And like Andrew Cuomo too. is literally begging the wealthy to come back because they are losing their tax base. And that's something I want to say to everybody right now. When you raise taxes on the wealthy, I understand you think they need to pay their fair share or whatever, whatever angle you want to look at it. They can afford to move and you can't. So when you jack up whatever to whatever, whatever number you need to be happy and feel good about yourself that you're. You're, you're saving things and paying for programs to help people. Whatever you want to tell yourself. Those people are going to move to Puerto Rico. They're going to move to other areas. They're going to put their money in offshore bank accounts. They're going to funnel it back and be nonprofits. Or they're going to just keep feeding into their businesses like Bezos does so he doesn't have to pay an income tax at the federal level. They are going to find ways around this. And when that happens, the next people in line are going to have to cover that difference. And that's going to be the not the ultra rich, but still the wealthy. And then after those wealthy people move, it will be the upper middle class. It will just keep working its way through the social class. And that's what you're going to have. You're going to have desolate cities that were so dependent on the wealthy. The wealthy are going to pack up their bags, fly to New Zealand. They're going to fly to all these safe havens, Switzerland. And you're never going to get that money. All that stuff that was promised by politicians, you're never going to get it. It's mm -hmm. all just a Ponzi scheme. you know. And politicians know this, but they're lobbied by whoever. You know, whether they want the optics of the public or their lobbyist in Washington to do this. And it's just money walks, money talks, bullshit walks. So I've heard people say, why would a rich person lobby the government to raise taxes um, if, it, if it affects businesses? And the, and the simple answer is uh, a big business like Amazon, first of all, they can find ways to pay less, find loopholes and things like that. But secondly, they could afford a tax hike or minimum wage hike when a small business or their competitor couldn't. So it's very simple for a big business to lobby and have it would it would have substantial negative effects on a small business. It basically is just yep. and then big business bigger using bigger government to take out small business. Up. Yeah. Yeah. It's an easy yeah, way. Get... It's an easy way for a big business to uh, circumvent any competition. Yeah, well, didn't Bezos net worth? like increased by a third under coronavirus. I can't go to the consignment shop down the street, but I can order the same products on Amazon. You know, this guy is just, I'm not saying it's him in particular being nefarious, but yeah, they can afford the hit your local pizzeria, excuse me, your local um, pharmacy, your local department store. They can't. And when they close up, once again, fleeing tax base, it's going to either, they're going to move out or those places close. And now that, that business tax ain't going to those programs, those programs become underfunded. I mean, this is the slow unraveling, and this is what's happening in cities all across America. That's why cities are slowly, mostly becoming like Detroit. Not quite to that extent quite yet, but bigger cities are falling apart across the country. It's, it's not going to stop until there's a dramatic change in policy. Yeah, and uh, people like Joe Rogan move from California to Texas, and they're talking about it all over their per podcast. There's an mm -hmm. exodus happening in these cities. Yeah, you know, people are fleeing California and New York. Yeah, they want to retroly, um, they want to retroly tax people in California for the entire year. Mm -hmm. They want to say you need to pay your whole, your whole state. Um, you have to tax front it a year right now. How many people do they think can do that? Uh, I don't know. Doesn't matter. If you don't, you, we'll just shut your business and take it all. Could you do that? I know I couldn't do that. Just fork no. over whatever thousands in, in tax. Just, here you go. I have a safety cushion. I don't have a safety mattress. <laughs> 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 it's ludicrous, man. Uh, and I wanted to touch on something else because the president was taking a lot of heat um, about um, the post office funding in the 
in the second CARES Act or whatever it's called in Congress that they can't get yeah. back together to pass. Um, they were nailing on saying he's uh, not election meddling, but they're basically saying he's trying to underfund the post office and they're atta- he's attacking the post office. Obama came out. OK, so Obama comes out and says all of this, says that he's attacking it, he's trying to make it seem like it's not possible. He doesn't want it to happen, whatever they say. And then at the same time, I'm seeing reports that 46, uh, 46 states wouldn't receive their ballots in time for the November election. Yeah. So it's this media duplicity again. They're saying that, you know, the administration's evil because he's trying to stop something, blah, 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 whatever political slander. And then at the same time, the post office coming out and saying, yeah, we can't even do this. Yeah. You yeah. I, yeah. To be to be really clear here, uh, if the government ran the post office as well as they run their pedophile rings, maybe I'd let them <laughs> have a crack at mail-in ballots. But uh, they, they just can't seem to get anything correct. They can't even handle the normal day-to-day mail. I don't trust them handling 100 million plus votes. How would that work, Dave? Post office island? Post Office Island. We need little Saint Post Office. <laughs> they would just drone you everything from an island in the freaking Virginia Islands or wherever they <laughs> got all their man-made islands. Unreal. But yeah, so the Democrats, one of their moving things is like, nope, we need, I think it was like $600 million, or it could be uh, uh, closer to a billion dollars they need for post office for the election in mm. particular. And the post office saying this isn't this can't be done. So the yeah, to be clear, the the post office funded. themselves are saying it's not happening. Yeah, it's not an administration. It's it's that it's that bureaucracy. The post office is saying this, and the Democrats are like, oh, he's we can't come to a deal because we need the money for this, and it's like it's not even possible. So once again, the typical government solution: put money on a fire, and it's going to put the fire out eventually, maybe, and it's it's. It's a joke. I mean, it, these people need to grow up, or we just need to vote them out because it's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Yeah, the fire will only go out once they're out of money. <laughs> yeah, and and just to touch on that relief bill, it was the total bill is two trillion dollars, and the Democrats are saying Republicans have to come up a trillion. Republicans are saying Democrats have to come down a trillion. So uh, the only thing I'm going to say about how that about we is, come down two trillion. Yeah. yeah. The two trillion dollar relief bill compromise, it's not about doll it's about dollar amount, not content of the legislation. Once again, they the government just wants X amount of dollars to do whatever they think is gonna do with it. You yeah. know, there's no there's no like methodical way. They they haven't even tried to save money, you know, and also some of these other things they passed in the first CARES Act, they're the money's not even used all the way. There's still funding out there for states. There's still funding out there for local governments. You know, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but it's there. And we're already trying to just smudge through more stuff. And it becomes, mm-hmm. here we are, you know, less than Oops. 100. We're, we're in the drag race and it's this political bargaining chip again. It's, it, 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 this is the most transparent of, of, of this narrative-based politics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so speaking of transparency, I don't know if you saw... Uh, Snowden seems to be making uh, runs in the news again. A lot of talks about him maybe being pardoned. I haven't heard anything concrete from the president saying he would pardon him, but uh, have you heard anything about this, the Snowden possibly being repardoned again? Are you saying that because I am his doppelganger? Maybe. It looks more no, I... real when you got your glasses on. <laughs> yeah, I got them off because they were jacked. I don't know if I could find a way to put these on you. Yeah. Yeah, I am Edward oh, there Snowden, is. reporting in from New York State. I'm in the woods. <laughs> You're going to get arrested. <laughs> I get swat <SWAT-teamed. laughs> <laughs> Just hear him. <laughs> like, what is that? Uh, no, I didn't hear anything about Snowden, but uh, it would be nice if he did get pardoned, considering yeah. it, you know, it's arguable that he did a, a Paul Revere kind of thing, right? They're spying on you. Ding, ding. It's an interesting way to put it, yeah. They're spying on you. I mean, how many people would give up their lifestyle, you know, to do such a thing? I mean, granted, he may have caused some deaths with his transparency. Yeah, it wasn't. Leaking of information. Yeah, it wasn't the least messy thing possible, but. No. I'm not I, and I'm sure perfect. if you were to ask him, he would try to find other avenues to release the content so people wouldn't have gotten killed or in trouble or. 
I'm sure he would uh, do things a little bit different if he had a second chance, but I don't think sure. he would regret his decision. No. Yeah, Trump uh, spoke, um, it was a few days ago, but he, he went on there and he was uh, showing how strong our economy is recovering in comparison to the other top uh, economies in the world. And uh, unless he's got cooked books, um, we're looking pretty good for recovery, actually, which is a surprising surprisingly good news in this downtime um we're doing better than most nations in europe china japan um it's a good thing a lot of good news jobs are being created there was a uh, over a million jobs last month i hope we see a uh, few more this month and um yeah i hope uh, i hope it just keeps going i hope our recovery happens i don't i hope you know we don't slip into some kind of messy recession or we're technically in a recession right um oh yeah yeah, um, I hope I hope this doesn't uh, table turn too much, but yeah, I'm trying to stay positive here. Well, we we kind of have it. It's kind of tricky to compare to European nations because really our country has 50 separate individual nations within it in a way. Um, in Europe, you'd, you'd be better off comparing U.S. to Europe versus U.S. to Germany, or comparing right. the state of Florida to Germany. Because our whole country gets affected so much by these 50 experiments, essentially. Uh, and, you know, you have match, uh, you know, how many Democratic states that say, we're just going to shut right down. And then we have, you know, some states like Florida and Texas that say, well, we'll probably stay open and kind of. And it throws the numbers off on a national level. It's, it's hard to compare the two. For sure. I think uh, the Germany number is important, though, because Germany is like, I think it's like the fourth or fifth largest economy in the world as far as a country yeah as far as manufacturing power too and stuff like it it, it it's the number one economy um country in europe mm -hmm. you know short of england which isn't even part of the european union anymore so uh, which is probably why they didn't want them to leave they wanted that coin man them uh, <laughs> unelected bureaucrats that keep sitting in their ivory towers um, yeah yeah in that interview uh trump called out the unions um and he talked about how uh just in general labor unions uh i think it was more specifically um i wish i wrote it down a little more i thought it was the teachers unions though um, okay that would make sense and uh <laughs> yeah and i think he even went a little further and they said if schools closed the money should go to this the, the money that was going to school should be going to the teach uh the parents well i, sh I don't know man i think well, we need to stop just giving people money but People, well, no. people who pay property tax are essentially employing the teachers. So if the teachers don't want to work, um, why are the why are the property taxpayers paying the teachers? Um, I I now remember kind of what it was about. It was about school choice as well. He kind of linked it into that that um, you know, we we got to open the schools, but what's preventing that is the power of these unions that lobby. Sure, Basically. they get their way every time. Any anything they want, they always get their way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, but his executive orders on student loan um, were extended till December, that there would be um, no student loan interest, which is good for people, mm -hmm. um, that they're not just getting tacked with interest when they don't have a job. The unemployment insurance, we spoke about this last week, but I just want to touch base. It's going until December 6th. Um, he did that unilaterally. It looks like a good move. We spoke about that a little, that uh, it's, it's Trump's playing it. Trump is playing this pretty well for how much he's been demonized on the entire thing. Yeah, There's he's... plenty of um, things that we can say that he did right or wrong now that we've gone through this thing for six months now. We can obviously cherry pick everything in hindsight. So, In, in the context of politics, he's playing it very well. In the context of policy, I would disagree with him on a lot of things he did, but in the context of politics, he is doing a very good job. Yeah. Certainly. Uh, and also, right before that, he addressed the media. They, uh, he had his advisors on, like Kushner, and they were talking about the peace deal in the Middle East. Now, I don't know too much about Middle East politics, but from my understanding, two nations that kind of hated each other are coming together, and that is always good news. Yeah, I'll be interested always to see how long that, because there's been peace deals between the different nations before. I'm interested to see how long that lasts. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, regardless, it was historic for the times, granted everything. Mm -hmm. 
And once again, it's just playing. Trump is looking on fire in some of these aspects, man. He might have a really strong platform as long as everything kind of, as long as the bubble gum from his hair is, is holding in here, he might have a really good run. He, he might have a better run than 2016. Think so. Uh, I'm just, uh, you know, if I had to look at everything, you know, all Trump had in 16 was, uh, Obviously, his platform of what he would do, lock her up, build the wall, trade deals, um, school choice, some of these things that he's you know talked about, um, and he was just slugging in the fences with him. Now that he's kind of got a track record, he kind of has the stuff under his belt. Like uh, It seems more tangible for him to um, brag about him. It's not well, just like a theory. It's, it's something he's practiced and, and put in motion to some so degree. So th- you think that puts him at advantage? I do. I would disagree. I would think he's slightly at a disadvantage. I think a big part of 16 was he's an outsider. Um, he's not a politician. He's going to come in here and he's going to do all these things. And now it's reversed. It's flipped. Now he's not an outsider anymore. He's a politician. He's got four years of experience under his belt. Now he's got to run on what he did. I don't know if that puts him as as big an advantage as he had in 16. I can see that angle, but name another president that during an economic crisis gave people extra money. Um, I don't know if I could. Bush gave out yeah, money, and then, didn't he? Then, I don't know if it was during then, an economic crisis, I but I think he gave money out. He had stimulus I'm checks for sure. sure. I, I was alive for Bush, but I didn't have political consciousness then. I mean, executive action to get the 400 unemployment because Congress couldn't get their things together. Whether that's a good or a bad policy, mm-hmm. he can he can stand and beat his chest on that. Be like, when Congress wouldn't act, I did something. You know, and it kind of... Yeah, again, it's politics versus policy. Uh, as far as yeah. politics go, it's good politics. It's all about yeah, the spin, sure. though. How is he? Uh, how is he going to avoid? De- the Democrats are going to find a way to put some spin on this. I don't know oh, how they're yeah, going to do it. But they're going to circumventing the legislature, and he looks like an asshole for it, you know. But maybe, I mean, I'm not saying he's playing 3D chess like everybody else thinks he does. But maybe when he goes and passes these actions, it will force Congress's hand to some degree. So we'll that's see what how I, it all I think, shakes out. I think that's what he's banking on and hoping for. Right, and they'll get a better deal or Yeah, who knows, man. It's the things are so crazy. On the tr- on another Trump front, especially about 16 on our last week that uh, I don't have the gentleman's name, but a guy who had the main email that got the FISA warrant for the previous administration to monitor the Trump presidency. Apparently, he is going to admit that he pleaded guilty in altering the email that initially set up that whole chain of events for the surveillance of William Barr and the Donald Trump presidency. Well, that's that's uh, big news. Inauguration. Yeah, you uh, probably that, didn't that, hear about it. Probably I was going to say that. I was going to say that got swept right under the rug. I didn't hear about yep. that at all. Yeah. So if the guy's pleading guilty, I mean, he obviously knows that he was screwed. He was going to get busted, and he was just like, "Yep." You know, uh, Trump came out and he said him and Barr and everything. They said that we have the proof, you know, they uh, I don't remember their exact terminology with it, but they were talking about it that they uh, I think he said it was the one of the biggest um, not treason, probably treason is what Trump said about it. That it's it was probably treason. Hmm. So we'll see if uh, that gets media attention. We'll see how that gets buffed up before the election. And yeah, well. um, probably not. I feel like no one's going to. And that would be on the Trump team, you know. Um, I'm wondering, the campaign ads, they, they cut a pretty good one right after Biden picked Kamala. Um, they're going to be heavy, dude. These are going to be heavy ads. And yeah. Very entertaining. This is a very entertaining election cycle once again. It's going to get it's gonna get better. We, um, we, we kind of talked about it last week about what an interesting pick she is, given the climate of, of everything going on right now. Uh, her and Biden both just being, you know, Biden, the author of the crime bill, Kamala Harris, uh, locking up nonviolent offenders and um, doing her best to keep an innocent man on death row. And I mean, she's just got a terrible track record. Um, she's probably responsible for more black people being ripped apart from their families than anybody else running for office right now. That's a that's a tough. I mean, other Kevin said this in the group, other than the blue, no matter who people She's a tough uh, person to sell to the public right now. Doesn't matter, bro. She's black and a woman. Are you hating on women and black people? Her specifically? Yes. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong, dude. Um, it's going to be interesting if they how they spin it or if they even cover it. You know, probably not. I think people know. I just I I just really think it's the whole orange mad orange man is bad thing. You know, orange man They're, bad. Yeah, the, I mean, what's the saying for fuck our whole lives? The lesser of two evils. We're seeing that play out very strategically this cycle. It's been the lesser of two evils as long as I can remember. Yeah, and, uh, and I, Hillary was was way worse of a candidate and much more hated by the average person yeah. than Joe Biden is. And I'm not I'm not picking anybody, by the way, who uses the lesser of two evil stuff because I'm not going to lie to you. I voted for some people I wasn't super enthused about either. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't John McCain's biggest fan by any, by any imagination. Trump, I wasn't. What do you mean? Biggest... You don't like guys with no necks? Uh, no, not particularly. Poor I wasn't John a huge. I wasn't. I wasn't a huge Trump guy either. I did vote for him, but I wasn't. wasn't as uh, biggest fan. Mister Pennsylvania swing state. Yeah, that that plays a role. I think it was that. Oh. I think if I was in New York, I probably wouldn't have voted for Trump. I just was thinking about something uh, Kamala said during the, the debates that she would get rid of fracking. Your state, Pennsylvania, large, large fracking community there. I wonder yeah, how that's going to help in a swing state. She's already starting to lose the election for Biden, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> that's how Trump won some of these states, Pennsylvania and Michigan and all these blue collar workers. That's uh, that's not a that's not a good call on her part. Yeah, very interesting. We'll see how it shakes out. I can't believe we're still talking about this fracking thing. What what do you mean? You can't light your water on fire? No. I thought that was a thing. No, you can't. I've tried. It's it's a not, first of all, that original video was nonsense to begin with. But uh, we're, how how long after that video are we? We're still talking about fracking bad. Are you serious? Well, it's funny too because especially the Democrats, Obama, he uh, he talked about it that we got to get off foreign oil. We need to stop being dependent on foreign nations for our energy. Yeah, and then he shut off but, our offshore drilling. Yeah, and then when Frank came <laughs> out, they're like, "It kills the environment." Be like, "Well, what do you? How about we get off foreign oil and then we'll figure out a way to fix the environment and not have to use oil?" But let's get off foreign dependence here, people. Like you can you can't have it all. You can't, you, we can't just broad brush everything and switch it all off. Once again, Kamala Harris. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of like, you know, she wants to have people stop eating meat. You know, she just hit all the green talking oh, points, all the. I'm telling you, get rid of fossil fuels, all of it. Like we can't. It's not gonna happen. We're I'm telling you right now. Changes. I've been very, very laid back. I have done a good job not revolting against tyrants. If they take away meat, I'm shutting everything down, and that's probably gonna get us shut down. It's a figure of speech. I'm not really going to attack the government. Relax. But don't take away my meat. Come and take my steak. Come and, come and stake it. <laughs> Good lord. This is the don't, greatest steak off in United States don't, history. Don't take the meat. Leave it alone. Take away the plants. Nobody likes plants you anyway. Can, they pretend you can have this plants. meat when you pull from my dead, cold succulent fingers i'll eat fruits but if you make me eat vegetables that's when this gets ugly <laughs> we're shutting it down fantastic i'm gonna have to edit a lot of this i think a lot of it's good dude <laughs> this is this is bad we're gonna get raided we're not doing anything relax easy easy hey we don't have you know an audience just ten thousand followers don't worry about it you know small ten? reach 10,000 followers. Small, we've got to grow that. We've got to grow that. We didn't really talk about this. Let's jump into a quick, a quick segue of how do, we, how do we grow? How do we get bigger? How do we get more subscribers, more followers, more likes? It's very simple. Go to the page and you, uh, you follow. If you like the video, you share the video. It's as simple right. as that. You know what else Even helps? If... Stickers. we got new stickers. Ooh! Yeah, these are Ron Tell Swanson. me about it, Dave. This What's is Ron Swanson, absolute legend. He's got different. Uh, we got different ones on here. This one says, "Capitalism: God's way of determining who is smart and who is poor." <laughs> Ron Swanson quotes on the flag. Who 
couldn't get any better than that. Come on. America. <laughs> yeah, like, subscribe, share, comment, anything. It all helps. We're here for the people. We're just trying to help each other, help you. You know, Dave and I, we've been uh, friends for a while. We've talked politics for a long time. And, you know, once again, we're just trying to relay information, give our opinions to some degree. But we're really just here to talk news, talk through the news, um, give some predictions. That's, I, that's what we're here for. Unfortunately, can't make any promises. I will give many opinions. <laughs> Can't help it. Sorry, can't help myself. I'll try, but I stop. <laughs> yeah, I just like I said at the beginning of this, it just seems like uh, opinions has bled into into journalism, and I think uh, one of our niches, one of our holes into the system, one way to unglitch the matrix would be to kind of drive that point home to try to separate some of this um, narrative and opinion from the facts and the news and i think i think we can stand on that you know i think, well, I think and still give our breakdown and stuff i think i'd be more okay if the media was honest and came out and said listen we're not journalists we're opinions we have biases here they are if they put it out on the front they said we're transparent about it i'd probably be more okay with it um but they don't they put on this front like they're these great journalists they come out with their news stories and then they shh cover the facts up with all their opinions and then we're supposed to just take it. I don't like it. I don't like it. You're not a journalist? Don't Misleading tend to be headlines. a journalist. Misleading headlines. I, I just, none of it. I don't like any of it. Speaking of misleading headlines, there was a Kamala Harris thing. I was on Facebook. Not that I get all my news from Facebook and that's not even news, but it's about the fact checking that goes on on Facebook. Somebody um, put something on Facebook about Kamala Harris being a descendant of slave owners. And uh, it was fact-checked and shut down, and it said uh, the, he the headline that comes up underneath the article, there's a little thing, and it says fact-check, misleading claim, um, whatever. And if you weren't to click it and actually read it, you would go, oh my god, they're lying, she's not a descendant of slave owners. So naturally I go in and I click the thing, and it says, uh, well, she was a uh, descendant of slave owners, um, but it's not a secret, so somehow this claim is misleading, and I'm like, what, what does that even mean? The, the fact check said, yeah, it's right, but we don't like it, basically. How Orwellian, my friend. <laughs> the Ministry if of that Truth. Is not the, if that is not <laughs> the Ministry of Truth. Dude, that should be a sticker. That's that was... The December label, Ministry of Truth. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to be the Ministry of Truth. They sound like assholes. Hey, you just have to go through and change all print media entertainment to sounds familiar. See how the whole Facebook thing is He's only in his thirties, man. He's already super basically like a modern day Rockefeller and Carnegie, as far as like, you know, masters of industry. And this guy's gonna be around for a long time. It's never it's not gonna stop at Facebook. Uh, apparently Apparently, Facebook is coming out with their own version of Bitcoin, so they're going to have Facebook Cash. They're going to have Facebook, um, Facebook everything. Facebook, Facebook Bitcoin, like fa Facebook money. I don't know. I really don't know anything about it. I just heard it from a third-hand source, and uh, but yeah, I wouldn't put it past this guy. To I mean, he's super wealthy. Also, sure. Valley is, but um, yeah, super wealthy, and he's going to be around for a while, man. You know, it's kind of scary. Yeah. You know. I don't know. I still wonder how much I'm not his biggest fan, but I still wonder how much he knows is going on behind the scenes. Well, he's going over to China and, you know, does whatever for the Chinese. So that doesn't bode well for this country. Probably either. Or literally the country trying to replace us in many aspects and probably not, but he met with the president too. So, I mean, I don't know. The dude know. speaks fluent Chinese, man. Zuckerberg. Very intelligent guy. That's probably a tough language. Can't Although people be. say people say English is tough. People who try to speak other languages who try to learn English, they say it's a tough language to learn. So I don't I don't know. How hard is it, I guess? Yeah, us privileged Americans always been speaking. <laughs> and I'm not going to the metric system either. Never even though it's, even though it's so much easier. We should uh, we should kinda do a 
in depth investigation why that is the way it is. Because we're stuck. Like, why do we use standard? Because we've been using it. And we don't want to switch. It's pretty much that simple. Well, dude, saying thirty degrees out kind of doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, that's freezing. Thirty-two is freezing. And we're like, no. How about zero? Yeah, like no, zero dude, freezing. Dude, zero freezing yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Like, what temperature's based off though? <laughs> They say 32 up there. We're like, yeah, bro, cool story. At zero. I don't want to switch to to uh, Celsius. I want to switch to Kelvin. It's way more confusing. <laughs> What's the temperature at? 5,000 degrees Kelvin. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> this is that kind of thing. What? What hat are you rocking there? Let's see it. Uh, disclaimer, I'm not the biggest hockey fan. I got this hat for free. What is this? You're supporting the DC team. Uh, I did not buy this hat. It was my sister's ex-boyfriend. Perfect work hat, though. <laughs> is I don't care if I drop it, kick it, light it on fire. It's my work hat. It's the literally the government's team and their star player is a Russian. How dare you? <laughs> How American. How American is that? It's probably made in Taiwan, too, on top of it. I had a guess. Taiwan's not bad. Taiwan, I kind of like Taiwan. I wish them the best in the Made global environment. Made in Taiwan. Is it really? Yeah. It really <laughs> is. What are the odds? It really is, man. They make good hats. What can I say? Yeah, cheap labor too. Let's be buying for twenty nine ninety nine. If there's anything I can say about the Chinese, they make great, cheap products and good food. I'm not the biggest Chinese fan, but uh, Korean barbecue is supposed to be really good. So, can, can different we talk, country, same kind of thing. Chinese food has got to be the most creative food there is on earth. Because they Mexi- eat bats? Mexican food's the laziest food. And that laziest? Mean, are you, it's all the same ingredients. All of it. It's all Beans, ground peppers, meat, and tortilla, it. and tomatoes. It's all the same. All of it. Yeah, but it's so good, dude. Mexican food is like some of my top cuisine oh god it can stay over there and we can build a wall around it actually i love tacos i can't say anything i like americanized miss, tacos though just like i like americanized, mighty taco just like i miss americanized chinese food i, don't, I haven't had actual chinese food so I yeah, can't it's very even, different from my i can't even yeah well if you go to a really bad chinese restaurant it's probably similar because you're still eating rats and cockroaches <laughs> and bats <laughs> before they get shut down that's when they're the best <laughs> if illegals aren't making my tacos, I don't want them. <laughs> We've gone off I'm, the rails, ladies and gentlemen. This is officially, officially, it's not a political podcast. We're just talking about whatever we want. Bats and food and bats. building walls. Don't we eat, build walls, not bridges. Don't eat the bats. That's how you get corona. Unbelievable. <laughs> Anything else on the news front? I don't know if I've no, seen... Man, that's a- What were you saying? I'm sorry. I was going to say, I don't know if I've seen anything much uh, in the past week other than the VP pack. That's what's been plastered all over the news. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm happy I was uh, doing some investigative research during the week. And uh, yeah, those are just the points, just everything I kind of touched on. Um, I want to kind of, I didn't want to do a VP show. I didn't want to do a COVID show. I know we, we were going to talk about them, but uh so sure. I kind of brought up the other stuff so that there was um, some other media out there, something that maybe wasn't regurgitated to the level that COVID and the VP pick have been. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's all I well, really got on my agenda. That seems today. to be the problem with the news. Again, our intro, a big reason for it. How often do you turn on the news and you hear a narrative and then you flip the channel and then you turn on the news and it's the same narrative and you flip the channel and you turn on the news and it's the same narrative. Not only is it the same narrative, it's word for word. Most of the time, terrible. Hate, hate the news. I hate journalists because they're not the news and they're not journalists. It's gone downhill. Yeah. And the media is dying, being replaced by um, programs like this in the Mm -hmm. new media. And uh, yeah, something's got to be the asteroid to kill those dinosaurs, man. And it's got to (laughs) happen. You know, it's been happening for a while. It's just a moment of time. Right. Trying time to, to change the mindset. To ride that wave. Got to ride that wave, man. And uh, until they cave, you know, it is what it is. And now it's great that everybody can be a journalist, but it's also kind of dangerous. So once again, the giant experiment is just another form of experiment, man. 
I like it. I like, I like it. it and I think it's time for an outro. All right. Did you nail down this... an outro? We we are we were intro list today. We're gonna use a nature intro. Nature intro was beautiful. Yeah. So relaxed. Look at that oak tree, dude. Mother Nature giving me the phenomenal backdrop. Look at that, dude. I have a sheet. This was dude. likely this was likely nature at one point, and then we killed something and made it a sheet. I don't know how sheets. Was work. it a, a Egyptian cotton? cotton? Cotton, Egyptian cotton plant sh- shot that thing. We were very <laughs> violent about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, this has been Ryan and Dave with December 1773. If you like our video, please share the video. Tell your friends and family. Send our links. Comment. Subscribe. Like. It's all important. It all adds up, and we appreciate all the support. And uh, we'll see you next week. I like it. See you next week. Stickers, su- stickers, subscribe, like, comment, share, all the things. Do all the things all the time. Yes, sir. I'll see you next week, buddy. See ya. Peace, man. Yeah.